for them. Yeah, I really felt for them um, last week with the result against Leeds. And you sort of think, you know, they'd come so close to that result. Um, and, you know, possibly it was it was a very harsh penalty. Um, yeah. And, you know, then you think, well, what's that going to do to their confidence? They've got Rovers. It's a big game. But Rovers were sort of quite buoyant, really. And... Um, so, yeah, I'm really pleased for them that they got the result. Yeah, Especially maybe the extra couple of days prep that they had um, might have been a positive factor for them. Um, it, it, who knows? And I've just realised, I've just remembered another nickname that came out of the blue. We used to call Tinnerauer owner Bright Eyes, didn't we? And um, certainly the turnaround part of, of that the, the punning part of that nickname worked well in this instant because I, I imagine everyone when he got that ball was just shouting turn around run yeah <laughs> make sure the right sticks yes exactly um, right let's move into the other three o'clock kickoff on Sunday I listened to this one on the radio um, Lee versus Huddersfield it was 10-6 to the Giants at half time so Lee kept it close again in the first half where they scored first but it was 44 points to 6 by the end Scott Michalowskis was the referee um, in terms of the stats 50 more carries 445 more metres and 7 breaks to 1 in this convincing Huddersfield win Lee made 5 more errors and conceded 3 more penalties to give themselves an uphill task in this game uh, individually Mike Lawrence a try 184 metres Josh Jones 168 metres Kenny Edwards a try 154 metres uh, and, and um, you know nice touch from the moral vacuum as well he gave his boots away to uh, a, a child that he found in the stands I mean I don't know where that sits Covid regulation wise <laughs> but but um, you know you hopefully he wasn't carrying anything topic. it was a nice gesture therefore <laughs> And Ricky Latelli, two tries, six tackle bus, 143 metres and three clean breaks. For the losing Lee side, Brendan Elliott made his long-awaited debut, 152 metres from fullback for him. Ian Thornley, 132 metres. James Bell, 44 tackles, 11 of which were marker tackles. Adam Sidlow, 11 marker tackles and 117 metres. That's the closest we had to someone going both ways this week on the stats. Uh, Luke Yates did did find himself in trouble with the disciplinary a, day, a grade A dangerous contact charge one match penalty notice for him so that's a hell of a lot of work rate that Huddersfield will be missing in their game next week and James Cunningham got a caution for other contrary behaviour I think he maybe stood on someone or something but they obviously didn't find it conclusive enough to charge him with a stamp one fan view Sarah yes yeah, so Mark W got in touch and said a quiet first half but we were outstanding in the second putting up about three different try of the month candidates in front of the travelling fans. Even though the game was wrapped up at this point, the McGilvery touchline kick assist to Bruno would probably go down as one of my favourite fans as a Giants fan, just for the sheer immersion and madness of it. Cowbells are back. Yeah, that try came after the hooter, which is, um, you know, it shows how much they were playing right to the, right to the very end yeah. in this one, Huddersfield, whereas Lee maybe not so much. If, if you've seen that one back, Sarah, and it was another set of highlights that were only only put up today which is a poor do on the Super League's part there um, there was like four or five Giants waiting for the ball to bounce after it had been kicked back inside by Jerry no lead defender coming across in sight really so obviously they'd switched off when the hooter went and Huddersfield great spread play out wide very much tightrope walking by McGilvery and put the speculative kick back inside but it wasn't a speculative kick when there's so many blokes <laughs> waiting to to take the ball um they also scored a really good try through Jake Wardle um in this game really good ball movement from Huddersfield for that the starting the starting to look good it, it really is coming together um from the radio commentary side of things it sounded like Ricky Lutelli had a stormer um and he's a very strong player so it's good to see him fit but also, it seemed the game turned a bit when Adam O'Brien came off the bench and gave them a little bit more out of dummy half than what James Cunningham was offering. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and Adam O'Brien was was another good performer, I think, in this match for for Huddersfield. Um, and I think he's been decent for them, decent for them for a while there. So um, so I think that's worth calling out as well but some some decent tries from Huddersfield and Lee I just don't know 
don't know that it's an, it was another shift. Like you know, Brearley misses out this time. Um, Reynolds and Ellis, it was their first start together it, as halfback combination. They just don't seem to have it all all ironed out. Who should play where and when? I mean, I, I don't get it with them. Yeah, yeah, you'd think that they'd have sort of decided by now. Yeah, I mean, even like who plays hooker. I, I mean, bits like Junior Sal was on the bench. I'm, I'm not sure what the motivation for that was you know if I, I'd say start him ahead of Gellin if you if you want him in your side um, yeah. you know that was your plan at the start of the year and I, I just don't I just don't understand it I, I, I don't I just don't get it with Lee about the team selection and I feel sorry for Duffy he's coming to this year with a short preparation a, a thin squad and he has added a couple of decent signings from the NRL that should contribute but this is at Elliot's debut and he's coming into a side that's really disjointed because it's playing about its sixth halfback combination in seven games yeah yeah it's just not well it's just not yeah helpful is it for them no something else that probably didn't help them was Matty Russell picking up an injury um, so it's good they had an outside back on the bench I suppose in, in that regard because um, he's, he's a game player isn't he and James Bell got Simbind for a high tackle I wasn't I wasn't entirely sure from the replay of this it looked maybe it was more a shoulder charge than a than a high tackle I, I was a bit confused um, when that one came to be shown in the in the highlights package but um even so, you know, no further action there, and it wouldn't have affected the result one way or another either. Um, Huddersfield by far the better side in this in this encounter. Yep. Okay, uh, shall we move on to the last game, Sarah? Yeah, I saw this one. You saw this one. Yeah. You saw this one. It was it was wet. We know some people that saw it in the ground that got soaked. Poor fellas. It's lasses. always wet in Leeds. Joshua will tell you that. Mm-hmm. So it finished Leeds 12, Hull FC 18, after being Leeds 8, Hull FC 18 at half time. And it was refereed by Marcus Griffith. Um, in terms of team stats, Leeds made 280 more metres and had more carries, but Hull had four breaks to three and three tries to two, as well as two fewer errors. Discipline could have hurt Hull with five more penalties conceded, but it didn't in the end. Individually, uh, Josh Griffin with one try, one try assist, 128 metres and two clean breaks. Chris Satai with 120 metres. Jay Cater with 42 tackles, 11 of which were marker tackles. And Liggy Sow with 41 tackles, 10 marker tackles. For the uh, losers, Mikhail Eichley, him, with 143 metres. Ash Hanley with 130 metres and Luke Briscoe with 129 metres. Um, and we had some fan views. Yes, we uh, did. Plenty. Fat Boy Rob, who said he left his review on Sunday afternoon, <laughs> said, Leeds get battered again. Hashtag A got in. <laughs> John Hamilton said, rubbish. Yep. Uh, John Buke 2 said Hull deserved winners Leeds final ball poor ref was poor the standard of referees in our game is declining well sign up for a course John Paige said what an ugly match the ref lost the game in the first 15 minutes some absolutely bizarre refereeing decisions for both teams our defence was absolutely outstanding love having fans back in the stadium but I don't miss that bloody drum don't know what's worse the drum or a cowbell uh Paige has just had a baby so I can't tell her to sign up for a refereeing course but I think we can settle the debate of the the, the drum or the cowbell in fact no we don't say drum or cowbell it's the band if you're saying just drum or cowbell I'd say cowbell's worse but when you put in the trumpets too Sarah yeah. the, the band for me is worse than the cowbell yeah that's two votes for band so sorry out leads and you know, I'm sorry, but who thinks I know? I might rock up to the uh, rugby this afternoon with a tuba under my arm. <laughs> well, it's, it, there's an element now of it being tradition. I hope that when the social distancing measures are removed, they 
keep the band in the corner of the south stand rather than letting them stand right in the middle underneath where the commentary boxes are. Um, <laughs> that's one uh, request, please, Leeds Rhinos. Uh, Matt Speakman said, Leeds lacking a leader on the pitch and it shows. Gale offered nothing and wasted some good work by the forwards, especially Oledsky. I still think Agar needs to bring Dwyer in earlier as he's definitely a spark for this team. Yeah, and Joshua's granddad said, it always rains in Leeds. It's so nice to see it in the dry. Sod it, I want it to be there. Griff showed Hurrell why he's no dream team centre. How loss prevented Briscoe scoring, we'll never know, but defences win matches and how we did defend. Yep, for sure. David Pye said, really enjoyed this game. Close, tough, bit of tension and boiled over. Some good plays and some desperate plays. Gale had some bad kicks, but some great kicks. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Leeds heat pressure on Hull, but they managed to keep them out. Well played both teams and well done the ref for not being pressurised by the crowd. Mark Snide's forgotten right foot said... It's Langer's, it... innit? Mark Snide's forgotten right foot is Langer's, innit? Uh, probably. Anyway. A, for... A mixed first half with Leeds getting the first try, but three scores down on Hull's left edge gave us a lead of 18-8. What happened in the second half was either piss poor attack or the best defensive performance this season. Leeds threw everything at FC in attack for nearly the full 40 and could only score with three minutes left in the game. Gutsy win for FC, but you feel the performance needs to be better. Yeah. There was some insane defending. Um, I'd really like to have actually seen us carry the ball for a set and, you know, like completed it and got into Leeds half. Yeah, Leeds made more errors in the game. <laughs> yeah, crazy. But your errors were concentrated into that second half, weren't they, I suppose? Yeah. Which is why it felt for probably 20 minutes you'd never had an attacking set. Yeah. I think, like, the first four minutes we were on their line, he thought, come on, we've got to do something. And then obviously they went up the other end and scored. And you, well, for me, it was that concern of, have we blown it again? You know, we've we've had good pressure and now we've um, conceded. But thankfully, it was not so. And, um, yeah, I thought the tries we scored were nice. Um, good to see Connor, at, you know, throwing a decent pass out for Swift. I think and then... that's been I think that's been missed, hasn't it, in the in the sort of Josh Griffin rightly justified late step love fest. But Connor's yeah. pass to Swift was fantastic. Yeah. You know, and you know, after the interception that he got picked out for um that was against Wigan, wasn't it? Um you know, it was really nice to see him doing something different and it coming off so well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and how Briscoe did not score that try. <laughs> Shall we? Surely, all he needed to do, after he'd been <laughs> sort of vaguely tackled, you know, his momentum had stopped by appreciate that the defender wasn't in contact with him, all he needed to do, wasn't it, to reach his arm out or to move slightly and he was over the line. Why did he start rolling around the floor? I, I, the second roll, it was just... I mean, it, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> because he's a, he's a seasoned veteran try-scoring player. It's not like he's a... You know, a young kid prop forward that's never scored a try and doesn't quite know what he's doing. Exactly. What? <laughs> he just needed to, to, to put it that he was over the line with the ball in his hand. The first roll did all it need to do. Um, you, you got to credit Carlos Tumavavi for coming in and holding him oh, up. And absolutely. And I know Leeds fans will say, well, he then jumped free and got the ball down but I think the referee had quite rightly blown the whistle by that point because he was held up the defensive effort had been completed the ball was up but his tackle but his ball carrying arms were down and you know I think there was a point in that which his momentum had stopped I know we saw we've seen the odd try in the past where it's kind of been let go on a bit further there was one there was one Willie Manu scored I can't remember if it was for Hull or for Saints 
I remember it and dislike it, so it was probably for Saints, where he was tackled for an eternity and held up, and then they let him somehow still get the score. I don't know if the referee was maybe just way behind play or something, but 